and he would show me how to grab vectors and playing fields. And you can, yeah, it's it does a lot. I mean, look at it has like a, yeah, yeah, a video game play. slot there. I don't know. What <laughs> it's it a Game Boy. Is. It's a Game Boy. What's going on everyone? Today we have an awesome video for you. We're gonna be going over the best calculators for the SAT and the ACT. We're gonna start with simple calculators. We're gonna go all the way up to very advanced calculators. And we're gonna to talk to you about the features of each calculator, what the benefits are, what some of the drawbacks are. And make sure to watch to the end of this video because I'm gonna give you my pick for the number one calculator on the SAT, the ACT, and you may be surprised at the results. So, Let's get into the different calculators that you can use. I wanna start this video off by saying that both the SAT and ACT are exams where you technically do not need a calculator. It's part of the design of the exam that you really should be able to do the questions even on sections that you are able to use a calculator without one. And I think anyone that is great at test prep and understand these tests would agree with that. Now that said, a calculator can be an awesome and useful tool for a lot of students to get through some of the problems. The issue is some calculators are you know, quite difficult to use, others are very simple, but you sacrifice features. So we're gonna go through a lot of the different options of calculators and try to point out what some of the good parts about those calculators are and maybe some of the drawbacks. So first we're gonna talk about just using the pen and the mind, right? No calculator. Now, obviously on part of the SAT, you do have to complete that part of the test, section three, without a calculator. So you're basically required to do that on the SAT. But I think a lot of people should consider not using a calculator or at least practicing without one so that you can try to creatively work around some issues. So for example, there may be a way that you can grind out a question by plugging in variables and getting all kinds of wacky numbers and that will require a calculator. I think using your mind as your calculator and using your pen and learning the formal ways to do questions can be very helpful in the long run. So I, I would suggest that all students prepare at least some part of the time without a calculator. All right, so the second type of calculator we're going to talk about would be what's called the four function calculator. I call this the dink dinky calculator. Um, I don't know why I call it that, but basically it's just a very simple calculator. This is like the one that your mom has in her drawer in the kitchen with like all the bills and stuff in it that like just somehow is just, you know, it's basically for typing numbers and doing basic calculations. I actually don't mind using these. This would not, I would not have a problem with having this on the SAT. And that's just me because I don't like relying on the calculator for, you know, questions about parabolas and lines. Like I like to do those out by hand and really think them through. So this calculator is perfect for just doing basic calculations, but if you feel like you do need a graphing function, obviously the weakness of this calculator is no graphing function, no other advanced math functions other than basic ones. So I guess the positives would be simplicity, ease of use, and the negatives would be it just doesn't graph or do anything like that. All right, next type of calculator, the scientific calculator. You have different brands for this type of calculator. This is a Casio. You also obviously have the TI, the Texas Instruments, which is the, you know, the beast of the calculator industry. But, you know, this one works fine as well. A little bit more robust than the, the Dinky calculator, which is the four function. Really doesn't do a lot. You have this one, still doesn't graph, but what can you do with this? Sine, cosine, tangent. You can do a little bit of logs. You can do negative exponents. You can do, you know, other uh, math calculations, a little bit of advanced stuff. I think an upgrade on this one, I would say my ideal scenario, which I'm not getting into my, my top choice yet, but I, I would say between these two, I would probably pick the scientific because it just, for the student out there, I think it helps you with a few problems and therefore it's worth it. It is a little bit complicated. You kind of have to learn how to use it. But once again, the, we the big weakness is it doesn't graph. So these two aren't a big difference in my opinion, but I do see the value in the scientific. All right, so we have now the basic graphing calculator, calculator number four, slightly more robust than this one because it does have the graphing function. This is a Casio, once again, would be similar to the TI-84, so you could compare this to TI-84, the, the big brick calculator that some people still use, some schools still have them, 
These are the, I would say, the older models of graphing calculators. They're not color screens. They're still, what do they call these screens? LEDs or something like that? Or what, I, they're just basic crummy screens. So it's not really, it's, it's more useful in my opinion than this calculator, but it also brings in a lot of complications and it's just, it maybe is almost too much calculator without the bells and whistles that you really want. It's like just a crummy, version of something fancy almost. So I'm not really too fond of this calculator. This I would actually put almost on the bottom of my list so far. This will be number one for my use. Then I'll actually probably take this one as number two. And then the crummy graphing would be number three because I think it just sucks. And that's just my opinion. All right, moving on now, they've upgraded these graphing calculators a little bit and they have now the, I guess the CE version of the TI-84. Remember the brick calculator, you have a slightly slimmer, more sleek, more well-lit version. I actually like this calculator. It just strikes me as being more user-friendly. That may just be perception. Maybe it's just the cool coloring. I don't know, but I just prefer this calculator. I think the design is better. Just the, the brick feeling of these calculators, it makes it feel like an old Game Boy or something. Like it's just antiquated. Um, and this one feels a lot more, a lot more slick. Also it has battery power and also I think it has a much larger memory function, but not really that important. For whatever reason, I'm gonna put this one in a tie with, with this calculator at the top of my list. I think whatever you actually prefer, a lot of students will really prefer the graphing calculator, the advanced graphing calculator. I still think the brick calculator sucks and I'm gonna put the dinky four function in um, third place. So we have tie for first, and then we have solo third, and then we have fourth. So that's my ranking thus far. So in this calculator also you can add programs and you can just do a lot more saving. That may actually not be legal on the SAT or ACT, so I'd be really careful with that. But like for math class or something like that, like these calculators become an incredible resource and can be really helpful in just organizing your information. So I think that is a huge advantage of this kind of calculator. We were just debating this actually. This calculator actually does do non-base 10 logs, which is a huge advantage on the ACT. If you don't know how to do those questions, to quickly do that, you just go to math, and then you scroll down to A, which is log base, and you hit enter, and then you have log base. So that could be helpful about this calculator. I do think for some students that would be really important. Um, now moving on to the the the, the Bentley, the, the Rolls-Royce, the Ferrari, I guess, of calculators, the Enspire CX. This is basically a computer, uh, full color screen, massive graphing capabilities. And what you actually can do is download programs on this to make this a CAS uh, calculator. Do not do that for the SAT or the ACT. That is not legal. So there are calculators are one step above this that would be illegal for the ACT. They are legal on the SAT. But this will probably be the max level calculator any high school student would ever need or use. And this would be, I guess, the gold standard for the powerful calculator. I actually don't like using this for the test. I think it's a great tool, don't get me wrong. It's, it's sick, I mean, it does so much, but it's just overkill for a test of uh, ninth grade algebra, like the SAT. So it just doesn't really, uh, doesn't really help that much. And it can actually hurt because it's just wasting a lot of time with the massive amount of functions. So that said, I, I, I probably wouldn't put this high on my list. Maybe it jumps into third, where this is in first, tied for first with, with this kind of calculator, depending on your preference. I might put this in second. This would be in second place. And then I'd have the four function in third because of the ease of use. And then um, I would put this one in last, I just hate it. What would be the best scenario would probably be to bring two calculators, which some people do, to standardize tests where you bring something like one of these and then as a backup in case this breaks or runs out of batteries or whatever crazy thing happens, they take it away, you have a backup for function. So maybe that's a better plan, but I think the weakness of this calculator is definitely the complicated nature of it. If you're not comfortable with it, I would definitely not just go out and buy it if you've never used it before and think it's going to help you, it's actually gonna hurt you. Whereas if you had you know, a year's worth of experience under your belt using this in math class in school, then I think it's great. Then I might actually put it at one in the list. But I think without that, not good. But otherwise, a great calculator. So something like this is useful because it can graph in three dimensions. It's just one step above 
this calculator. I don't even really, I don't, just because I have so little experience using this, to be honest, I don't know some of the advanced functions that you could achieve with this, but uh, I know a lot of students like it and that's because they're comfortable with it. But at the end of the day, it's probably overkill. All right, last but not least, we do have this thing. If anyone knows what this is, I'd honestly be pretty shocked. This is actually an abacus. It's an ancient counting device and you could technically bring this to the SAT or the ACT. Probably not the best. I mean, it's really just uh, counting. I don't know if it does anything else other than that, but um, it does help you count. So as a joke, I would include the abacus, maybe even above the brick. I'm kidding, but this is kind of a joke, but you know, I guess proving the point that you don't need a calculator for the SAT or the ACT, maybe next time I go take the test, I'll bring my abacus as a joke. But yes, the abacus does help with counting. Let's go through my list from bottom to top of my favorite calculators. Starting with last place, we have the Abacus. It's really just terrible, but funny nonetheless. Number two, we have the Brick Calculator, the Graphing Calculator. Pretty useful, has a lot of drawbacks, kind of antiquated. I don't know, I just don't like it. Um, next, we have the Four Function Calculator, the Basic Calculator, Nimble. I would say useful in its own way and very simplistic. Then after that, I would put the very complicated calculators, the Inspire, you know, CAS level calculators, extremely useful with the right student. This could be number one. Um, for me, it's not because I just don't know all the functions, but if you use this in class, I would recommend it. If you don't, I probably wouldn't. Then I guess tie for first place. We have the basic scientific, and then the new age graphing, I think they both have their merits. One is a little simple, a little more streamlined. The other has a lot of functions and is, is sleek and clean. Both very useful on the test. I think whichever one you feel most comfortable with, I think you go with between these two and this one. So if you, you whichever one of these two you use in your latest math class in school, I'd say you go with that would probably be my first choice. But then I have my actual first place vote which is, of course, the human mind. I think calculators are totally overrated on standardized tests. I barely pick one up the whole time. I think most of the top students and top tutors and you know people in test prep would agree that if you learn how to do the problems without a calculator, uh, you'll be much stronger and much more efficient. And then only use the calculator for things like you know uh, high level multiplication and stuff like that, which is why I find this kind of calculator to be very good. Um, if I was going to bring a calculator, to the SAT or the ACT, what would I do? I would probably bring these two because I'm a psycho, but also because in case one breaks, I have a backup, I have a powerful calculator, I have a simple calculator. I don't think you can ask for anything other than that. And that is my final determination as to what the best calculator combo would be for the SAT or the ACT. Hopefully this video was beneficial. If you did like this video, please subscribe below, hit the like button, I want to shoot for 300 likes in this video because I feel like calculators are such an important subject. And check out the blog, link is in the bio of this video. Thanks for watching guys, peace.